Good morning, everyone. Uh, the name of my movie is Life is Beautiful. And here are the credits and the posters. And it is a simple story, but not an easy one to tell. It has all the elements that is fable has. It has soy, joy, fear, sorrow, human anger. But the most important of all, it has hope. So it's about Guido. He's a Jewish man who arrives to work at Arizo. It's a city in Italy where his uncle is having a restaurant and he falls in love with a non-Jewish a Christian lady named Dora who is a teacher by profession. And then uh, they both elope during Dora's engagement. They marry and have a son named Jeshua. But uh, when the world, uh, when the Germany, the Nazi forces occupy Italy in World War II, uh, Guido and his uncle are seized and uh, put onto a concentration camp. But in the camp, uh, Guido hides this true situation to his son, Jeshua. He explained that they are in a complicated uh, game and if uh, they have to, uh, they will get uh, several points for activities like hiding. And, uh, you know, uh, if they don't ask for food and if they try to remain uh, tough, they will get points. And if they complete thousand points, they will get a tank because it was a gift that his uh, son wanted in his birthday. So he just tries to hide the harsh reality that what was going to happen to them. But uh, when the Germany forces are defeated and uh, defeated and the allies uh, occupy the camp, they liberate all the uh, concentrate camp prisoners. So Guido is killed in the process while he's trying to uh, uh, vacate her wife. And in the end monologue, it is uh, said by Jeshua that uh, this was the price that uh, Guido paid with his life to keep him happy and keep his, him alive. So the human rights, to be very honest, uh, every possible human right was violated. And there was murder, mm -hmm. slavery, torture, cruel, cruelty, genocide, culture destruction, stripping of property, family, wealth, dictatorship, anti-Semitism, that is hatred towards Jews, and racism. So these are the uh, these are the human rights which include but not are limited to, because all the thirty of them were violated. So what is the conclusion? Uh, there can be silver, silver lining to every uh, cloud. Laughter can, you know, ease the blow. Like uh, Guido when uh, he tries to remain humorous at all the situation, even though he knew that he was going to die eventually and he was treated as a slave. And preventing human rights is not the duty of state, it's responsibility of mankind. So in 1938, uh, they held an EVN conference between all the nations. It was headed by Roosevelt. And Hitler said that uh, if the nations are, you know, willing to do something, uh, not just a sympathetic uh, response to the Jews, he's willing to let them go and they can take them as refugees. But uh, not everyone agreed and all the nations put a quota on Jews. So even if Hitler or Nazi Germany was the main culprit, there can be, uh, there is a chance that the Holocaust could have been avoided if uh, uh, all the other nations could have shown a little more compassion. So it's not just the Nazis, it was the whole world in fact. And what goes around comes around. And if you check out about all the officials of uh, Nazi Germany and uh, mainly those who are responsible for genocide, uh, I guess 95% of them committed suicide in the end. And the rest 5% were somehow assassinated or put into trial by uh, Israel. And hope is a powerful tool and dangerous weapon. It was a powerful tool when uh, Guido was using for his son Jeshua and to, uh, telling him that they are not being executed. They are just in a game. But it is also a powerful weapon because the Nazi Germany and uh, all the all the People were following Nazi because they had a hope that uh, German people had a hope that they are going to have a better future because of them. Even when the Aus accession of Austria took into place, people were happy that they are being invaded because they thought that uh, Germany would bring, this Third Reich would bring uh, prosperity to them. And all it takes is a persistent manipulation to turn a sane man into an horrible being. 
and it can be found in the example like uh, the young children of school elementary school were given lectures that how their race is a uh, superior one and how other races are uh, next to animals and even worse than that in newspaper uh, cartoons are depicting jews as uh, greedy pigs was shown and uh, in the mathematical uh, uh, paper question like this that if there are 10,000 uh, cripplings and government spend 50 cripplings on day in my day. How much money can be saved by the nation if they execute them all? So when a person is fighting for three meals a day and when someone promises them food, prosperity and a better future, even the, you can say, even the people who are not that evil or regular human beings slightly turn into horrible creatures. And the bibliography in reference, Trivia, the name of the movie in Italy, uh, Italian was La Vista e Bella and Robert Benini who played uh, the main protagonist is also the real life hus husband of Nicolette Bracchi who, is, uh, who played his wife Dora. Robert Benign also wrote the screenplay and was the director of the movie and it, uh, in starting it he was opposed because he was not a Jew and making a movie that to a black comedy about uh, grave situation like Holocaust was uh, in starting was opposed and the book is based uh, the movie is based on a book by Rubino Salmani and the name of the book is The End I Beat Hitler. Thank you. Thank you Krishna it was an amazing presentation I must say the best presentation of the morning. Good morning, everyone. I am Meg Jumal, a student of MS Economics, and I'm here to give my presentation on the movie, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. This movie came out in the year 2008. So this is the DVD poster of the film. This is the cast and the credit. Asa Butterfield as Bruno, Jack Scanlon as Shamul, Vera Farmiga as Elsa, David Thewlis as Ralph and others. It's a heyday film production and its IMDb rating is 7.8. So the storyline of the film goes around like uh, it's based on a boy, Bruno, uh, who is a German boy uh, who misses his life and family back in Berlin because his father had to transfer to Poland because now he's in charge of a concentration camp. So after coming to Poland uh, near the countryside, uh, Bruno misses his life and uh, he just one day goes out exploring where he finds Shumul, who is also another eight year old boy, but he lives on the other side of the fence. So the people on the other side are basically the Jewish prisoners and uh, Bruno is unaware of the fact uh, that he's a Jew and uh, Bruno's family is un also unaware that their, uh, uh, that their uh, son had befriended a Jew. So happy to make a new friend, Bruno keeps visiting Shamul and he keeps bringing him food uh, for months. And we can also throughout the movie, we can see that the Jews were being tortured by Nazis. They were brutally beaten and they, the Nazis were showing no respect and dignity to the Jews. So all these incidents as well as uh, all these horrifying activities that were taking place during those times, the, uh, the, they didn't go unnoticed by uh, Bruno's mother, who is a very kind lady, Elsa. So she's clearly very horrified as well as uh, she's um, afraid to witness such situation and she doesn't want her children to grow up in such an environment. So she decides to send them back to Berlin. But Bruno is clearly uh, upset because he will miss Shamul. Um, so on the day before his departure, he tells uh, Shamul that he's going back. Whereas Shamul tells him that he's unable to find his own father in the concentration camp. So uh, Bruno decides to help him and he tells him that he'll help him by coming inside uh, the camp. So the next day he goes uh, to uh, Shamul and he disguises himself as a Jewish prisoner by wearing the same uniform that they were given. That is the blue and white striped pajama and shirt. Uh, Shamul brings that to him and he enters the fence through uh, with the help of Shamul. After entering uh, and after like uh, all their efforts, they go in vain when they're unable to find his father. So just then a group of soldiers, they come and they take the two boys along with hundreds of Jews. They take them into a building, which is uh, a gas chamber. Even though uh, in this movie, the brutality of the scene was not showed, but we know that both the boys as well as those hundreds of Jews died a very brutal death inside those gas chamber. And Bruno's family is left in uh, guilt of their son's brutal death. So these are the human rights violations that I came across while watching the movie. The first is genocide. So the most important and the most main human rights violation in this movie is genocide. It basically refers to targeted um, 
mass uh, targeted killing so in this movie the jews were being targeted up by the nazis and they were being targeted just because they belonged to a certain community and we can see that they were brutally killed inside those gas chambers and after that their bodies were being burned we the movie uh, the picture down below uh, there's a scene in the movie where bruno goes into his basement and he sees that all these dolls are lying there these are basically the dolls that his sister abandoned but this also gives us a very um, clear picture of the horrifying events that were taking place inside those gas chamber where people were told to go uh, inside without any clothes and th and the doors were shut on them and they were killed inside so discrimination and dehumanization this comes under genocide they were being discriminated the jews were being discriminated they were being segregated from the society as well as their rights were being taken away from them and they were called with dehumanizing names like they were in the movie we saw that uh, the jews were being called as rats they were called as evil they were called as destructive in nature and they were called evil they were called um, and the uh, nazis basically uh, they believed that jews were the reason due to which their nation has collapsed and uh, they had different ideologies uh, um for they they, um, they basically believed that jews were the reason due to which uh, germans are poor right now so the next is torture throughout the movie we can see that the jews were being tortured up by the nazis they were brutally beaten to death we saw that uh, the old man pavel who was uh, who was a doctor before he came to the concentration camp he was beaten to death because of his one petty mistake that he did that was he spilled the drink on the tray uh, table he was beaten to death by lieutenant kotler we also saw that shmuel was also the 8 year old boy who was a jew who was beaten up uh by lieutenant kotler because uh, he just took a piece of food from that that bruno gave him in the movie we can see that uh, the jews in the camp are uh, are not provided with any hygienic condition they are being told to work all day long without any breaks they are not given enough food and they are often beaten up by the soldiers the next is disappearance uh by coming towards the end of the movie there is the scene when bruno when shmuel is unable to find his father so uh, Shmuel tells that um, he, his father had gone to work in the factory, but after that he didn't return. So the, basically, his father was taken up by the soldiers into the gas chamber where he was killed. The next is false advertisement. Uh, so in the movie, there's this scene where uh, the, um, the, all the commanders and the soldiers are sitting together and they're watching a documentary. So in the docu documentary, they are actually showing that how the conditions are inside those concentration camp. Like they are showing that people are enjoying. There are cafes, there are recreational activities, and everybody is enjoying and and people are actually living a good life. But whereas the actual condition inside those camps is horrifying as well as brutal, people are dying. They are being tortured up so brutally by the soldiers. The next is forced labor or slavery. So in the movie, the Jews are being treated as slaves. We can see that Pavel, who was a doctor before he was taken to the camp, uh, now he he does petty works at their house. He does cleaning and he peels the potatoes and he makes food and gardening and other stuff. We can also see that Shmuel was also told to do petty works inside the house. And all the Jews Jews who were in the concentration camp, they were um, forced to do certain works. Like they were told to make huts and they were not even given enough break. So the articles um, are uh, Article One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Seven, Eleven, and Twenty-Five. Now we're coming on to the conclusion. I would like to conclude by saying that don't discriminate. Treat everyone with respect and dignity, and uh, despite racial differences, unlike what happened to Jews inside those concentration camp in Germany during that time, they were treated so brutally. They were not shown any respect, not any dignity. And once dignity and respect is gone. people choose people tend to choose uh, uh like uh, people tend to choose different ways to take on revenge those revengeful feelings can lead to many other crimes so the next is what goes comes back around so uh, so uh, even uh, even though this movie has a very disappointing ending that both the boys died in the gas chamber but it teaches us a very important lesson that what goes that what you give it comes back to you bruno's father was the one who was in charge of the concentration camp and he was the one under whose supervision all the activities were taking place like people were dying in the gas chambers they were being tortured brutally but towards the end of the movie we saw saw that how his own son like how his own beloved son died the same death that he was giving to all those people next is rightful education must be provided to children uh important uh, sorry rightful education is very important for children because they are the future of our nation we in the movie saw that uh, both gretel and bruno uh, gretel is bruno's sister both are being tutored by their teacher that uh, they are being brainwashed they are being told that uh, jews are um, 
they are evil they are destructive in nature they they mock our literature as well as culture and they are the reason due to which the germans are poor and they have lost the world war it is because of them and during that time in germany uh, certain curriculums were made particular cur curriculums were made so that people so that uh, the children can be taught how to discriminate between jews and how to uh, uh, how to discriminate as well as uh, it was basically uh, and um, and towards and uh, during that time almost 90% of germans youth was hitler's youth that means that they were following his ideology next is individual an individual should try to rise above hate and revengeful feelings it is very important for an individual to rise above uh, feelings petty feelings like hate jealousy revenge because these feelings on a personal level can be controlled but on a societal level these can take up to uh, like this can lead up to heinous crimes like genocide like we saw in the movie uh, so it is very important to control such feelings because uh, hitler hitler had his propaganda he had his own ideology which was passed on to people and people accepted his ideology at that time because they were one level and somehow they had this conception that hitler would be the one that would take him take them out of the misery that germany was in that moment so they accepted his ideology due to which such crimes happen the next is the most important factor that leads to such heinous crimes is difference between one's perspective and ideology the difference the uh, Uh, the uh, the difference in one's ideology is the basic reason due to which crimes happen hitler had a different ideology he had a different uh, perspective to uh, uh, of the jews which was uh, then passed on to people uh, the people accepted it and due to which such crimes happened during that time so people accepted uh, the nazi propaganda even though they knew that his activities were anti jew because but still they believed him because uh, they uh, they saw hope in him that he was the one that could take uh, them out of the misery the next is be considerate of others feelings don't make fun of them so even in today's world uh, we are living right now we should not make fun of anybody we should not uh, discriminate them on the basis of their gender uh, color uh, caste religion etc because such small things such small acts can lead to disasters like genocide in future one minute more because people uh, because people have uh, because it has happened in the past we know it can happen in the future so we should not make fun of uh, people's feeling we should be considerate because on a personal level this can lead to, to a societal level next is friendship overpowers hate we can see that in the movie both the boys found their uh, peace and happiness in that small time when they were together even though the environment that was surrounding them was uh, so much cruel and hate and full of hate but even though this movie had a very disappointing ending it taught us a very important lesson the in that it taught us that how innocent their friendship was and it uh, tells us that how uh, friendship is greater than hate so this is the bibliography and trivia and so may 8 uh, that was yesterday uh, few, on back in 1945 was the day of liberation in nazi regime so in many countries today is the day that is marked as the day of liberation due to the time difference and this movie is movies based on a novel thank you thank you so much mac you actually took me walk past uh, the movie once again i watched this movie i guess so not less than 10 years back and uh, i watched this movie today with you again thank you very much for a beautiful presentation and i guess so that the way you have observed the human rights uh, issues violations and the uh observations and the in-depth analysis of the movie was an absolute beauty and uh i will say pleasure to hear thank you, thank you very much mac for the presentation and uh, i would have loved to hear you more but the thing is that we do not have time thank you so, so thank you once again